y'all welcome back to the faithful farmer mama it is seed starting day i am so excited because it's seed starting day but today i want to really quick go out in the garden and kind of show you some things that are happening there before we get started with the seeds I want to thank you for being here and if you're new to my channel please go down below and find the subscribe button click that along with the little bell that will alert you when we post new videos here on the farm there's lots going on here on the farm um, it is almost spring we have 20 days until spring hits here but our last frost date is not expected until the 19th of April I probably will not put anything that is frost tender in the ground until the last week of April, maybe even that first week of May. Things like tomatoes and peppers and um, beans and things like that. Everything else, they may go in a little sooner. Things like cabbage and broccoli and cauliflower, peas, they can handle a little bit of cold. But we have been working on some things here on the farm a little different than last year. You can find a video that I had did about planting potatoes and I did the bag method. I didn't have the best success with it. I did get some potatoes, but not enough to sustain our family for the entire winter. This year, we are trying something that I saw on another YouTube channel. Um, it is called Roots and Refuge. She is a great gal to follow for gardening. She has a book, she has sells stickers and shirts, and she is amazing. Her name is Jess, and her husband's name is Jeremiah. They are a great pair, and they do such a great job on their farm. I was super excited when I saw their method for growing potatoes last year, and I was going to try that here on the farm to see how it worked. As you may recall, our ground here is like solid, it feels like solid rock. It is clay and very hard red dirt. It reminds me a lot of the Georgia dirt that's out there, but here in central Oklahoma where we are located, we have red dirt and it is hard and it is very hard to grow in if you do not supplement with compost and manure and lots of nutrients and additives. So, Roots and Refuge, so this year with our potatoes, on Roots and Refuge, she did a top layer and grew potatoes on top of that. And I am so excited to try this method because it's stuff that we already have. So this spot right here that you see that's got hay on it, this is actually our cleaning from the chicken coop. The winter we had this year has been crazy. We had like a little over 10 inches of snow about a week and a half ago can't believe we have nothing now and it's actually it's kind of chilly right now but it's beautiful out um, so this is the remainder of what we had in the bottom of the chicken coop now this is what Jess does on Roots and Refuge she had put a large layer of cardboard and then she put compost and um, nutrients and things like that and then put some dirt and then planted her potatoes on top of that and if you remember with potatoes as soon as they start to grow you cover them up with dirt and they will grow more and you do that a couple times and then your potatoes will actually grow in the dirt that you've been piling up on top that is what we're going to do right here let me turn this camera around so you can kind of see the area just a little bit better so this is our chicken coop and we do move this fence line around quite a bit and you can kind of see where the line was um, maybe not so much in the camera but you can kind of see right here was where the the fence was during the winter because they've eaten all the grass so of course everything looks dead there well in that spot right there where that layer is chickens had made lots and lots and lots of dusting holes Ah, <sighs> dusting holes. They're really not great for the lawnmower. So we decided we would put a large area of potatoes here with cardboard, compost, manure, topsoil, and then we're going to plant our potatoes on top of that. I am so excited to see how many potatoes we get this year using this method. We are also in the process of building a greenhouse. Although, it's been put on hold, so our seed starting actually won't happen in our greenhouse this year, as I had originally hoped would happen. But, 
it is going to happen. We actually do our seeds inside because I have a spot in my house that the windows are on the, they get the southern sun. That would be Rue back there. Um, our southern sun and it's such a great spot to grow seeds. But we will be putting our greenhouse in a different location this time. Um, it's gonna probably go right in here somewhere. We wanna make a greenhouse that has lots and lots of windows in it and uh, stick built, but lots of windows. That is something that will be coming up in the next year or so. You'll see that here on this video as well. Say hi, Dusty. Doo doo. I thought I would come grab eggs since I was out here, but looks like everybody's still laying. <laughs> Hi, Julieta. Look at those beautiful eggs in there. So this is the area I actually do my seating in. I sit on the floor <laughs> surrounded by dirt and gardening boxes. This year we are going to be trying a special gardening technique that I had seen in a few places. Um, this is where I always grow my seeds. These windows right here let in the most beautiful warm sun sunlight here, especially in the afternoons. It's always very, very warm over here. So this is where I actually start my seeds. And I'm going to be using these containers here as sort of like a greenhouse. I found these at Dollar General, um, and they they actually were clearanced really cheap because they, one of them was broken, one was missing a wheel, um, but I'm going to be laying my seeds on this portion and then covering it so that they have adequate sun, yet they still have a greenhouse effect so that they are nice and warm inside of there, and then we're going to just let them grow. Now, I keep them, which is really funny. My husband always fusses this time of year because... Never can find the dolly. The dolly is under here. I use this old bucket to hold it up. But this is so that when it starts getting warm in the uh, spring, I can actually wheel this outside and let my seeds uh, get some outside action before I actually put them in the ground. So let's get started. These are the items that you will need. You will need a seed starting potting mix. I usually go with miracle Grow, or I've even tried the Espoma. Um, I don't mind either. They both work very well. Water. You'll need some trays to hold your pots. Sometimes I use these plastic pots that I've gotten from other um, plants that I've bought. But this year, again, I'm going to go with these Jiffy Pots. I like these because when the time has come to put them in the ground, you just break out the bottom and then stick these in the ground. And that will act, this pot will actually decompose in the ground with your ceiling and then their roots don't get disturbed as much. You will need some type of permanent marker so that you can write on your labels. I use an old chopstick. Um, to put the well the holes in the wells You will need garden tags. I label every single pot that I put in there because I want to know exactly what is in each pot You will need your seeds. Of course. These are all of my seeds that I plan on starting Today I plan on starting peppers and cabbage and broccoli and cauliflower. I'm very excited you can see another organiz seed organization video. I will put the card up in the top right hand corner. And then if you are doing the greenhouse effect with Tupperware containers or Rubbermaid containers, um, you will need those as well.
So now that our entire tray is full, I'm going to actually water it. Now I've always had a hard time finding a good handheld uh, watering can that doesn't overwater or underwater. So I kind of improvise. I use this. I actually cut just a few little holes in the top and then once I turn it over it actually drips a little and if you squeeze it a little bit it actually waters kind of just perfectly. It's really important to make sure you water all of your seeds very good right when you first plant them and then um, this will give them time to grow and germinate very well because they have the water that they need to get rid of their outer seed and actually start to become a plant. I'll also make sure I pour a little bit of water down in the bottom of the tray so that they can take water from the bottom instead of just from the top. That actually helps to keep them watered as well. And then once that's done, I will put this on and I will let them cook in the sun. So one of the other things I did today was I actually went outside and I'm planting some kale. Um, one of the things I love about Baker's Creek is that they usually will send free seed. Last year I got free yellow pear tomatoes and I absolutely love them so much that I bought more. Um, so this year I am planting a red Russian or also considered rugged jack kale. And then I'm also planting, this came from... Um, Baker Creek also, just a different package. This is a blue curled scotch kale. And I'm just gonna plant it right here in my garden, right in the bed. You may remember the arbor. I'm gonna plant it right there on the corner so it gets lots of sun. And these will also start growing. Um, package says to plant directly in the ground while there is still frost because kale does better in the cooler weather. So that is also happening today. So there we are. We have three trays full of seedlings. Now, the next thing I did was make sure I watered each and every one of them with my water bottle and then I made sure to cover them. I do leave these a little open on the edge so that they have some air right here or you could drill holes in the top to help give them an aeration. I like being able to just kind of sit it on the edge so that they still have a little bit of airflow. These in about seven to 14 days will all start blooming. They'll start seeing little sprouts on top. And that makes me so excited because that means we will be having fruits and vegetables all summer long and in a way that we can preserve for the rest of the year. I hope that this was helpful and I really am so excited about what's to come for our gardens. Comment below on things that you're going to be planning this year. I love different varieties and I always like to know what people are planning. Thanks for being here today, guys, and I hope you'll join us again soon. Bye.